If a man steps into it and starts leading without being resentful, without whining, without going, hey, I did it for two weeks and you didn't sleep with me. When the guy does that, nah. Yeah. But when he steps in and says, I'm going to be me, I'm going to be a man because I need to do it. Our family deserves it. And I don't care how you respond. Wives, she, she gravitates to her. She can't even stop herself. Mm. If a woman is in her masculine, you need to be in your masculine better than she is. And she will be in her feminine almost every time. The moment that I stop that, I can see the difference in yeah. her. I can feel the energy. Yeah. It's exposing yourself, differentiating and saying who you are. You fix nice guy by not being a nice guy. I'm Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I am honored today to be here on Ever Forward Radio. Adam, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me here, man. I'm so stoked to have this conversation this year on the show and this year in my life. I, I've really kind of made an intentional shift to highlight men and hopefully kind of solidify for me personally a lot of ways that I believe I'm being a good man and a lot of ways that I want to grow into being a better man, mm -hmm. but also to kind of help other men in the audience and in the world, because I know that I've been there and I've needed some help and I've needed other men, frankly, in my life. Yeah. But to go in a slightly different direction, we're team metal over here. Yeah. If you guys don't know, metal is my <laughs> metal is in my blood, metal, hard rock, all this stuff. And I was listening to an Avenge sevenfold song right before here in the gym. Mm -hmm. This means war. And I kind of felt like this was a great kickoff for our conversation today. So it's somewhere like in the middle. They go, I see the man ripping at my soul now. I know the man. I know him all too well. There's nothing here for free. Lost who I want to be. My takeaway on that was for men, but also I, you know, for humans in general, I guess. As a man, I feel like the man, the man that we want to be is, is there. Like we already know who he is, just waiting beneath the surface but a really thin line, a really thin membrane that is fear, that is family history, family trauma, genetics, that is belief systems, that is religion, right. that is all these things, a really thin but very strong membrane keeping us from letting the man that we know is in there come to life. Right. How would you interpret that? Men live by rules. Either we set our own rules or somebody else sets them for us. And there's way too many men in this world letting other people who are not qualified set the rules for them on who they get to be. And that is shutting out the men that we need because we don't need men who obey other people's rules. We need men who make their own rules and follow them. Hmm. Damn, you guys, he's good. He's good, he's <laughs> I've good. I've done this before. Yeah, he's hey. good. <laughs> I feel like me personally, I didn't know who I was as a human being, much less really when I look through the lens of who am I, Chase the man, mm -hmm. until about two-ish years ago, almost mm -hmm. three now when I was 35. Mm -hmm. And in thinking about that, I wanted to ask you, I feel like that's because I had not yet gone through all of these kind of male archetypes. Mm -hmm. I, I had not done as many things as I feel like maybe a man should have done by that point or could have done. I've done some things, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been a son. Uh, I am a son still. I'm a brother. I'm a husband. I was a soldier. Mm -hmm. I, I've done a lot of different things, but for some reason it wasn't until that point I kind of saw the connectedness and all of that. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is when, we are thinking, what kind of man am I? Or maybe what kind of man do I want to be or should be? Do we have to kind of go through all of these various archetypes? Or can we really stand firm in the ones that we've experienced and, and have that clarity of this is the man that I am, even though I have not yet maybe done blank? That is a great question. You know, we men, we, we figure out who we are by differentiating. We differentiate. I am not that man. I am not that man. I am not my mom. I am not whoever it might be. Who did you first decide you were not? Who was the first person that taught you who you were not? Oof. I, I, I guess I would say I was not this upright, 
law abiding, rule following, yes, sir, no ma'am kind of man that I, you know, believe to be. I still stand firm in a lot of my Absolutely. values and yep. ethics and politeness, mm -hmm. but I realized that that was just something I, I felt like I had to adopt. Yeah. That right there, that is very important. Who am I? Am I a man who just silently obeys everything that mm -hmm. I'm told? Or am I, well, or am I a man, <laughs> to be honest with you? You differentiate based on other things. Pain differentiates you. The pain of not being you, mm -hmm. being uncomfortable. It should chafe, right? If you wear you know, boots on, they're very comfortable. My friend helped me pick these boots out. Great I know that boots. they are good. Thank you. I know that they are good boots because they do not chafe me anywhere mm -hmm. when I wear them. Some men... Your father slides you into a pair of shoes that works perfect for you. This is the old days. Mm. Your father would say, this is the right shoe for you. Wear it and see how it fits. And that man would slide into it. Very comfortable. Some men, your father either slides you into the wrong shoes or says, hey, try it for yourself. Mm. Or our father doesn't even know how to slide us into shoes. We have to find everywhere else that it chafes. And eventually we cut off those parts and we get to ourselves to where we're wearing the right boot. Mm. You are wearing the right boot and it has taken you time to get there. Most of us in this world right now, we men are doing that. Mm. But we're not raised to tolerate pain very well. We're not raised to tolerate chafing very well. We're told that if they're chafing, there's something wrong with you. No, you're differentiating. Not the thing. Not the not thing. Not this embodiment, this article of clothing, Correct. whatever. Correct. But, but us. Correct. This is what's so, mm. so deadly about all the narratives online right now, about men should be this, men can't be that. If you're this, you are bad. Mm. No, if you're not that, then what are you? Who are you? Don't let the outside world define you. Mm. Be the man that you're supposed to be. We need those men. There are enough men hiding who they are. Mm. There's very few men like yourself being who they are. Out here trying, out here trying. You, you know, you got me thinking now how quite literally sometimes, many times actually, when I think back to how I maybe evolved mm -hmm. or how I mm -hmm. felt solidified in who I am mm -hmm. as a human, as a man, quite literally, it was the shoes I was wearing. It was the clothes that I was picking out and wearing. You know, it's kind of funny, but can you unpack that a little bit? You know, quite literally trying different clothes, trying different shoes, yeah. seeing what feels right, seeing what feels like a stretch, yeah. seeing f what feels like absolutely hell no. Is there actually a way to equate our, our attire to the type of man that we are? Oh, absolutely. I was reading a fantastic book called The Appearance of Power. Hmm. And in it, they talk about how every tribe of men, every group of men has signals of power, even down to the watch that you're wearing. Hmm. This watch, I have a phone. You're wearing a watch. I'm wearing a watch. Why do we wear watches anymore, right? We have clocks on the walls. We've got a phone in our pocket. Hmm. What does this mean? My time is so important that I need to wear a device on my wrist that I can look at at any moment to track the minutes that I'm spending. Hmm. When a man wears a watch, his time is worth tracking. That's what that means. Hmm. You, shoes, the shoes that you wear, the shirt that you wear, the way that you've got your necklace there that you've got going on, everything about you sends a signal to other men like you hmm. that you are their tribe or that they should not mess with you. That's another thing. Ooh Power, yeah, yeah. right? Got sh I got big shoulders. You got big shoulders. People don't mess with us. It's like, hey, ways. we're going to vibe or, hey, we're going to have a problem. Correct. Interesting. So we're separating out from men that we find that we mm. connect with. There's there's facial features for this that are tracked into genetic pieces. There's, there's everything, but it's differentiating yourself from other tribes, but zeroing in on your specific core of people that you want to work with. Damn. That's so intriguing. <laughs> As you're talking, I'm just unpacking all the different clothes that I would wear but more than that like it was identity yeah. I went to a small private Christian school growing up mm -hmm. middle school high school so I was in the dress code mm -hmm. I was I was told yeah. what to wear oh, and yeah. what image I was going to portray right after that I joined the military for six years I'm wearing a uniform yeah. a few different uniforms yeah. after that it was the first time really I had the luxury to <laughs> choose on a daily basis who who is Chase and what version does he want to quite literally show everybody? And also there was an East Coast aspect to it too. You know, I felt, you know, okay, I need to be prim and proper. I need yeah. to tuck in my shirt. I got to have a button uh -huh. down and all this stuff. Uh -huh. And then now coming out to LA for five years, I, I feel like, you know, I'm wearing the beads. <laughs> yes. I'm wearing the beads and oversized uh -huh. shirt and, you know, and the uh -huh. sneakers. And, you know, I, I have never felt more like, ah, oh, yeah. so comfortable in my clothes, but comfortable in my skin yes. and in my identity. Yes. And it seems so dumb, but to have you kind of explain it, that is such a strong representation of 
outside matching inside mm -hmm. or how to maybe choose to let your inside finally have an external expression. Right. Interesting. Manhood is not about hiding. Manhood is about revealing and it's about power and not, when I say manhood's about power, it, it, it's not power to hurt people, mm -hmm. power to control mm -hmm. people. I get that all the time. You know, you just want people to abuse their wife. No. Man, manhood is about the power to make changes in your world, feeding your children every day. That's power. Taking care of somebody who's injured, being able to take them into your home when they have nowhere else to go, that's power. The power to change your pain, the power to change your life, the, to, to affect your own circumstances. Manhood is about power. And you embody that power in what you wear, right? Some men wear steel-toed boots everywhere they go because that's what they wear on the job. And it signals other people, I wear steel-toed boots. Look at me. This is what I do. I probably do it for a living, but I'm also tough. Don't mess with me. I can kick your teeth in. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's so many things that we signal to, to take care of each other and, and to say, get away from me or come toward me. Mm. That's good. That's what manhood is supposed to be. We are supposed to send signals. We're not supposed to be a black hole that no signals emerge from us. Mm -hmm. So if you're a man who's slinking through this world, hiding, being secretive, that's not who you want to be. Not really. Someone told you to be afraid of you. Mm. Someone told you to hide. Someone told you that manhood is too risky for you to live it. Do you feel like maybe right now, collectively, we'll just say here in the U.S., mm -hmm. Do you think men are struggling more with how do I obtain mm -hmm. this kind of power you're talking about? Or do you feel like I've got it, I'm there. I'm just really struggling with how to accurately kind of share it and represent it. Shoot. You didn't grow up in California, right? I did not know Virginia. Ooh, ooh, okay. What was schooling out there like? Did they teach you that uh, men are bad and evil and that power is evil and men are not to be trusted, that boys are rapists? Did they teach you that growing up in public school? No. Oh, I boy. Don't, no, it doesn't sound familiar. So, it was really, you know, anything outside of the church was quite that. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up here in California, and I remember my female school teachers telling us how awful boys were, how mm. awful men were. I remember in high school telling us how awful men are and how I have to hold your handle your your hormones and everything or you will rape people you'll be awful you'll be evil i remember them saying why can't you be more like the girls i remember all of that so a lot of men it's wow. not a matter of can i get power or should i use power it's i am bad if i have power wow i am bad if i have power i am bad if i try to use power i am bad if i am a man there are many men in this world in America, especially in California, especially ashamed of their own manhood because they mm. think it makes them evil innately to have power. Ashamed. Ashamed. Wow. Have you met men like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if some have really kind of maybe not said that, but yeah. kind of reflecting on them. How do you feel when you're in their presence? When they're hiding, they're covered up, they're ashamed. Do you feel secure? Do you feel like they've got things handled? Do you feel bonded with them? No, there's definitely a missing link. It's kind of the opposite, mm -hmm. isn't it? They make mm -hmm. you uneasy because mm -hmm. you wonder what they're going to do. I know yeah. what they do. I, I, I want, they could do anything. You're a little shifty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're going to do anything it takes to minimize their pain and escape from, from blame or guilt. They're going to throw you under the mm -hmm. bus. A man who stands for who he is, who is visible, who is seen, who is consistent with his moral principles, you can trust that man to always be himself. Mm -hmm. No matter what pressure is going to come down the pipe, I can trust Chase to be Chase. I don't have to say, if someone comes in and, and treats Chase a certain way, is Chase going to turn on me? Mm. No. Chase is going to be right there. He's going to tell the guy to shove it. Yeah. I can trust you to be you because you are consistently yourself. If you are not consistently yourself, nobody can trust you. That's why when a man walks in a room and he's consistently himself, everyone gravitates mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. and they feel safe around him because mm -hmm. then he's predictable. Immediately, I kind of want to ask, you know, how do we get there <laughs> but let me fine-tune that question a little yeah. bit because i do want to drive home this importance i think you would agree in order to be the best man we can be mm -hmm. we need other men in our lives absolutely what role does a community of men that could just be one other guy or your own little guy tribe yeah. what role does other men in our life play in becoming the best man we can be that is such a great question. Um, so many of the men that I work with in my coaching uh, or that I encounter in all of my work, they have spent their life surrounded by women. They were raised maybe by a single mom. They had a really absent dad. They only all had women, sisters, all, all, women, all yeah. women. And they they differentiated themselves from the women. I know I'm not a woman, mm -hmm. but sometimes they had to please those women. 
sometimes they develop an attachment issue, anxious attachment, where they have to please those women, make them happy, make them, you know, everything is wonderful. Mm. Um, please them, earn good boy points in their marriage yeah. and things <laughs> yeah. like that. Good boy yeah. points. They call yeah. it shore play. You do the dishes, she can <laughs> sleep with you. No. Um, so often we are so used to tailoring ourselves to women that we don't even know how to connect to other men. Our father wow. is supposed to be the first model for us. Men, we bond best through a hormone called vasopressin. In the military, they really specialize in throwing vasopressin at you. You go and you storm that hill, you you bond together, you will mm. do any any activity that you achieve together bonds you together like super glue, right? Any guy that I've, you know, spent time with in a foxhole or right. any kind of significant event, yeah, you're right. You you leave and you're you're bonded. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's like, hey, I lost my hand. You're like, here, have mine. Like, that's the connection. That opens the door for emotional bonding for a lot mm. of men. There's vasopressin bonding. We have more receptors for it than women do. It, Our, it, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. I mean it makes me think of is that different from just trauma bonding? Yes. Okay. Trauma bonding, everyone makes that connection. It's very similar, but trauma bonding is also about um behavior modification. It's about mapping mm. you onto the other person so that you will do certain things with them. Okay. Um, trauma bonding specifically, yes, that can happen. Um, the suspension bridge effect that can happen uh, too. Yeah, okay. Um, people, when they talk about trauma bonding, they mean a couple different things, but yes, it, it, it can be what it's supposed to be is solving problems together. Mm. It's, uh, you know, Hey, I need to restore this car. Mm -hmm. Son, can you work on it with me? Dads are supposed to initiate you into, into vasopressin bonding. Okay. Um, Hey, I'm going to teach you a lesson at one year old about how to eat with a fork. You vasopressin bond together actually by doing that. If mm. your dad teaches you lessons, he initiates you into the world of male bonding. So there's a, a task at hand, a problem that needs to be solved, that solve an together. obstacle that needs to overcome. So it that you're saying that really needs to be present more than just let's just sit on the couch and kick it kind of thing. That's oxytocin bonding. Ah, Women really thrive with oxytocin, and men, men get that too, but we thrive with vasopressin. We need it. Hmm. If we don't get it, we don't do well. And here's the kicker. When we have that vasopressin, our brain tells us and sends signals that we are safe because we have those vasopressin bonds with men. So if a problem hits, mm -hmm. we have allies who will help us. Now we are open oh, yeah. to facing new challenges and risks. A man who has no vasopressin bonding with any other men, his brain says, I'm a lone wolf. Mm -hmm. I have to minimize all my risks. I have to stay safe. I have to be secret. I have to be you know, I have to out in the jungle alone. Nobody else is going to help me. Mm -hmm. That's it. And when you have vasopressin bonding with other men and when they can just pressure you and say, hey, step <laughs> up, do what yeah. you got to do. My yeah. buddies do this to me all the time. I love it. All of that male bonding is so crucial to be the best man that you can possibly be. So let's say we have maybe you know, actually I'm kind of raising my hand a lot on this as well. I would say in general, I have more currently any male relationships in my life. It's more that kind of oxytocin experience. Sure. Uh, no longer do I have the quantity of guys in my life or the types of guys in my life where we're problem solving. Uh, definitely had that in the army. Mm -hmm. My brother and I, a lot of friends are appeared in my life. We were big wrench heads and, you know, fabricating cars and Jeeps and all this stuff and, you know, problem yeah. solving. And, you know, I guess maybe, you know, like gym buddies, you know, guys that you're yeah. active with, oh, yeah. you know, that you know, we're problem solving. We're trying yep. to figure out how can we, you know, lift more weight or do more things. If we're there, if the guy's there, maybe right now they're realizing, actually, I don't have vasopressin connection with guys. I'm more yeah. oxytocin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a matter of, hey, I just need to cause a problem? Or how can I go from oxytocin <laughs> I to vasopressin? I love, I love that. When I teach women about that, yeah. that's what I'm here. Oh, so I should be higher drama is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> so we're chilling on the couch. Do so I need to break the couch so we exactly. can fix it together? And then build a new one. Yeah, no. Um, it could be as simple as he shows up. You don't have a couch. And you have an Ikea set right there to build the couch. It could be that. It could be though. It could. I would be, probably leave. It was right, Nike right, I, right. You know, I don't have. Four It'll break hours. the friendship anyway. Yeah, yeah. Try to do that. <laughs> no. Here, here's what men do. Here's how we really bond. Hey Chase, I have this problem with something. I need some help on something. Um, I need you to give me some feedback hmm. because I'm trying to accomplish something. I'm trying to hit a new record at the gym with the, with the deadlifts. You're amazing at deadlifts. Can you please help me hit a new record at this? Um, but here, I got to tell you what the the catch is. I need hmm. some help before I can do that. Can you give me some feedback on that? Here, I've got this issue. I've got this injury. I know you have overcome this injury in the past. Can you share your solution with me? Uh -huh. So it's beyond just problem stating and connection time. Absolutely. It's recognizing you have overcome this and I find value in your power. So give me your solution. Hmm. I will apply it and then we will have solved it together. That's fast suppressing bonding too. Men solving uh -huh. problems. Here's 
Here's a kicker. The male brain is not meant to operate. Every single man has to invent fire, invent the wheel, invent the spear. No, the male brain is supposed to work in a connection, a, a data node set, a huge network of male brains throughout history that have solved problems and then pass down that solution to the rest of the network as far as we can. Hmm. That's what the male brain is for. So any problem you or any man in the audience has, another man has already solved it. Our network right now is so broken up. It's all these individual little data nodes trying to reinvent hmm. fire, reinvent the wheel. It is supposed to be you and me coming together and saying, I have a problem. You've solved it. Can you give me your solution? Do you need any solutions from me? If not, do you have other people that can solve this problem for me? Do they need my solution? It's solution sharing. That's what the male brain is supposed to I like work that. I like that solution sharing. But I also kind of feel like I've been in some situations and maybe the listener right now is going, I can't even get there with the guys in my life. Yeah. Maybe the, limit, the limiting factor we think in not having as many or as strong yeah. male relationships is it's, it's just not the right guy or I'm only friends with this person because it's my wife's friend or yes. the girlfriend's or whatever. So... Mm -hmm. What would, would it be just that? Like, all right, let me just implement a, a problem solving experience. You know, what is like the hurdle that we need to get over or just give a fighting chance mm -hmm. to really see if that can happen? You know, most guys, a lot of guys have that struggle because they have what's called attachment issues. And I specialize in fixing that. It is the belief that no one else is ever going to help you. Mm. It's the belief no one else cares. It's a belief that other people will treat you like a burden. It's a belief that mm. you don't deserve for people to help you or that other people aren't to be trusted because they'll take from you if you try to get help. You re re exhibit a weakness and they're going to attack you like the world's I was going to wonder, yeah, is it a weakness thing? They, yeah. to avoid an attachment. Some guys break this way and say, don't trust anyone else ever. Shut out the world. Mm. Some guys break this way and say, I am not good enough. No one will ever care about me. Fear of abandonment and not being good enough. Fear of other people attacking mm. you if they get a chance. Okay. It can split those ways. So some guys are, they have... 10 male friends around them, but they've never connected with any of them. And some of them have no male friends around them and they feel utterly alone. It really is as simple as learning that it's okay mm. to share solutions. When you hear what the male brain is for, that we're supposed to click into each mm. other, that our fathers and our uncles and our grandfathers are supposed to initiate that. Did you have some of that growing up, men oh, initiating absolutely. you? Absolutely. I, I, camping, hiking, Boy Scouts with my uncle, with my grandfather, with my brother, my father. Absolutely. When you hit a frustration point now, you get hit, you, you hit a wall. What do you do when you are stuck and you have no answers? Who do you go to? My wife. Yeah. I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Who um, else do you go to? She says, I have no idea. Probably my brother. Yeah. Why? Even though he's younger, he has some very unique life experiences. Um, solutions. Yeah, yeah. He's collected yeah, yeah, solutions. Yeah. Damn, he got me. Right. Th yeah. Think of everything. Yeah. Everything is a solution to everything else, mm. right? I'm on this podcast because your audience has problems that I might have some solutions for. You're doing it right here. Mm. This is what the male brain is for. We mine other people for solutions. We give them our solutions in return. This is, I hate, so I'm, is it okay if I rant really quick? Please. I hate hate this idea on the internet of mansplaining. Let me mansplain for you about mansplaining really quick. If a man believes somebody else is worthy of his time, a man will sit and will explain the problem and the solution to them in mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. We expect the other man to say, hey, I know that part, skip ahead. Hey, I already know this part, skip ahead for yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Women will never do that. Mm -hmm. So they will sit through the entire lecture from start to finish and the man will say, well, I guess you didn't know any of that. But he will say, I invested all that time giving her this knowledge, giving her this information. She must love it. And mm. women are sitting there saying, I would only have explained it that way to a child. He must think I am a child. <laughs> so this idea of mansplaining, are there some Damn. are there some jerk men in this world who, yeah. who yes, there are. But most men who, who explain in that depth are trying to give you love and connection. Mm. And most women are spitting back in their faces because they have no idea why he's spending the time doing this. It's because he likes you. Mm. I've been there. My wife is pretty kind in those circumstances. Yeah. I mean, she lets me finish at least, and, yeah. then, and then rolls her eyes and she's like, "Thanks for mansplaining." Yeah, that. exactly. I'm like, what do you mean? You exactly. I, I I gave you my time because uh -huh. I care about you. Tell her that. Mm. Help her understand that. It's mm. men and women. We're different. watch out, baby. Hey, I learned something new today. Hey, get her on the phone with me. I'll explain it. <laughs> what about for guys? Again, kind of like myself, and you know, I I weave my, a lot of myself into a lot of the conversations because. 
we would not be here talking if I did not find value in what you're doing. And that's you. basically how I live a life ever forward. And I want to share these experiences. So I'm always very transparent. Mm -hmm. I just generally, and I feel naturally have way more female friendships, relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. I have always felt easier and yep. more genuine, yep. deeper connections yep. to women than with guys. Mm -hmm. And my explanation for that, and I'm curious to get your feedback here, I'm sure I'm not alone, is that I'm not the typical guy. Mm -hmm. I really don't give a shit about sports. I mean, I'll go to a game, but I'm, it's even more than that. I'm, I'm just, I've realized that I'm not a service level guy. Mm -hmm. I would rather like talk about something very real or let's problem solve, like you're saying, rather than just, let's just make, you know, I'll, I'll make so dumb jokes, but you know, I don't want to catch up about the game or I don't want to do something that I view as worthless, worthless. Yeah. It's a harsh word, but, but really. And so I feel like with women, I feel like it's easier and right out of the gate, you know, we can get to a real subject. We mm -hmm. can talk about emotions and feelings or, uh, I, I've even been told, you know, I, I kind of have this safeness about me mm -hmm. where I think women also naturally gravitate more towards me and mm -hmm. friendships and even intimate relationships. It's just, I don't know, it's my vibe, my energy, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But any guy like that, you naturally have more female friends. It's easier for you to make female friends than males, but you want to maintain and develop strong, meaningful male relationships. Mm -hmm. How can we kind of segue out of that? I know you've hit on a couple of things I can answer yeah, that, no, but I hear you. but if that's the guy right now, how do, how do we really get there? Well, let me ask you something. Okay. What if you don't naturally gravitate toward female friendships? What? What if men are failing oh. so hard at knowing that they can have those relationships with you? What if our society is breeding men who can't have substance and are afraid of it? And the women are having to step... all flipped up like a pretzel. What if the women have to step into the role of being more masculine and solving problems and having the serious talks and pushing hard? Damn. And in fact, what if the women are resentful that they have to take on those masculine roles in our society? I... This was a huge, huge moment for me. I was with my wife and a close mutual friend of ours, another woman, and she was talking about her less than ideal experiences in the dating world right now. And she said something that my wife had said, but I didn't realize it was something with women collectively or it was another woman outside of my wife. Mm -hmm. She goes, I'm so tired of acting in my masculine energy. I'm so tired of being the man I just, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it clicked with me. And I go, because my wife has this running joke. She's just like, just handle it. Just handle it. Just handle it. And I'm like, okay, I go on my phone. I thought you just, whatever, I'll get to it. I'm like, oh, this is a collective female thing. Yes. It's more than just the task that needs to get handled. It's the whole masculine presence and energy and weight that that requires. Yes. That blew my mind. Is that what you're talking about here? Let's think back. 5,000 years ago. I mean, shoot, let's think of 1,000 years ago, right? Uh, the Vikings roll through. Mm. And the Vikings wipe out and kill all the men in your village. All the men are dead. So the women ran off into the hills and survived. The women come back. They have their kids with them. It's women and kids. Who's going to hunt? Who's going to protect? Who's going to pick up a spear and stab a thief who comes into the night? Who you can't just not have men. Who fulfills the man's role? Hmm. Women, when there's a vacuum, they're wonderful. They can step right into it, but they hate it. Imagine hunting a mammoth. You have six very pregnant women with spears waddling out there. I have, hmm. My wife's on her fifth baby. They waddle when they're, when they're that wow. pregnant. You have six very pregnant waddling women with, with spears trying to go hunt a woolly mammoth. Is that ideal? I would say no. <laughs> I'm sure they would agree. <laughs> Do you think there's something yeah. that's going to go wrong? Mm. Yeah. You don't put women on the front lines like that. You, you just don't. Can some women handle it? Yeah, maybe so. Are they meant for that? Well, no, that's you and me. That's mm. that's where our communication evolved. That's why we vasopressin bond. That's why they oxytocin bond safe in a safe, low stress environment mm -hmm. together, sharing and nurturing. That's why you and I bond out there killing the guys in the other tribe mm. or, or hunting a mammoth together. We, we bond by achieving. Mm. Mm -hmm. Women can step into the masculine, but it costs them twice as much as it costs us to just do it the first time. 
Yeah. We're built for this, and they resent us when they have to double the energy to do what we're doing. Mm. They are meant for that, and they can thrive in that. But men are failing, and women are picking up the slack. What about the opposite? Can male step into the female, the, the role, the energy? Not the, well. Okay. Not well. We're just not made for that, interestingly. We can try. I've, I've got some, one of my best friends in the entire world is a single father. He is a fantastic father. 24 hours a day taking care of this child. It's, mm. it's exhausting watching. Um, it is hard for his brain to shift between child care and work and child care and work. He had to hire somebody to come in and mm. step in just for a couple hours a day and just take over that role because he just can't. Mm. Women, their brain works that way and it can work. Men, very hard. One at a time, laser focus. It is harder for us to step into the feminine than it is for them. We just pull back. We escape. Yeah. We just escape yeah. into anything, anything. Over in Japan, they've got a whole generation of young men who have completely checked out. Their birth rate has collapsed. South mm. Korea is, is one of the worst in the entire world. Men are just gone, and the men in America are following suit. It's not, people are not usually in cells mm. because women are not wanting men. I have just as many women coming to me, begging me to connect them to a good man. Mm. Women want marriage. They want kids. A lot of women do. Maybe not every woman, but a lot of women do. A lot of guys cannot find a woman because they don't know how to be a man. Damn. That's something to think about. Nobody ever trained them. No one ever initiated mm. them into manhood. They're doing the best they know how, and all they know how to do is be a good boy. And they try to good boy themselves into a marriage. It's just not going to happen. She's going to be the man. And if she's going to be the man, why would she want you? Damn. What about... I feel like we just killed someone. In the yeah. Audience, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm just frequently putting myself in the uh, the position of the listener. And uh, I mean, I'm having so many little just like moments. Hit me with um, them. Well, well I think you kind of solidified what I was talking about, this concept of how much more than I realize women <coughs> want to be taken care of or just want in, in a lot of, I'll say, typical maybe gender role situations um, just to just to have things handled. Excuse me. You're good. And, you know, I kind of viewed it as, and this is you know, maybe my own ignorance, I always viewed it as, well, what is if we're a co collective unit here and we're doing these things, mm -hmm. like, you know, if you can do this and I can do that sometimes or vice versa, or whatever, then cool. My brain's like, as long as the mission gets accomplished, yeah. as long as the thing happens, then we're good. Mm -hmm. But better understanding the dynamic of typical, I'll say gender roles, but also just what is it, you know, what does the situation need? Does it need more of the masculine? Does it need more of the feminine? And when the situation could really require more masculine and then I'm able to do it, usually things after that are a lot better. Mm -hmm. And also I kind of get this unique feedback, like these moments of, oh, like, oh, it, it's more than just the task. It's more than just the mission. It, it's, you know, my role in this situation mm -hmm. and how I can feel fulfilled, but also letting her know, you know, that I can handle these situations. And then I know that she's fulfilled. Yes. That's wild. Well, and then she's free to do what she needs to do. She's free to fulfill the feminine mm -hmm. role, which is, Absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people this. Men build structures, right? We build we build the buildings. We build the castles. We build the house. Mm. Women build within the structures and between the structures. We build the house. They make the home, right? That's it. But they also network between the mm -hmm, homes. Mm -hmm. The feminine energy is about filling the home and about connecting and bonding and nurturing between. So a bunch of dudes... Right. If, if, if there's an apartment building of 10 dudes who live alone in an apartment building, they're not going to do it. They're going to they're going to in their own room. Like each one of them has a, has a bench press and that's it. Like they won't speak. No eye contact. But if you have a bunch of women living there yeah. with them, a bunch of married couples, mm. they all start networking and building and connecting mm. like they they fill their home and they also connect with the other women around them and fill the network. And, and they, they connect between the structures when they're in their feminine energy. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the feminine energy is for. Mm -hmm. It, it can only work when they're safe. That's why you and I are on the outside. That's, mm. The military is the masculine in our society, but the domestic is the feminine. Think of it that way. Mm -hmm. The domestic can't function if enemies are coming in and just raiding and t killing and taking. The masculine, the, the, on the outside, the military force exists to protect, 
the structure so that then inside the, the feminine energy can work. Mm -hmm. the, um, the Spartan kings had this structure. They mm -hmm. had the masculine king on the outside, the military king, and they had domestic, arguably, the more feminine energy king on the inside. And the masculine king had precedence so that he could protect, but the internal one, they weren't supposed to bring their armies in and, and cross wow. pollinate as much. They, they shared that power in different spheres. And that's the masculine and the feminine. It's not you're less than me because you're a woman. It's here is where you thrive, mm. and here is what you can do that I can't do. Let me protect that so that you can do it. That's what it's supposed to be. I love that. I love that. So kind of, I, I feel like we're in a good place to maybe transition into, we've been kind of establishing the man, the masculine, mm -hmm. how maybe we can raise the bar there, mm -hmm. tap into more of who we are as a man, and you know, let that person finally yeah. shine through Absolutely. relationships. When we are in relationship as a strong man, mm -hmm. What, in your opinion, are some of the largest obstacles we're facing now? Let's say we're a strong man, we're presenting, we're with in relationship with partner. Yep. You know, what then? What next? Like, finally, I got my manhood. Okay, well, now, shit, I hit this other wall. Because <laughs> I know you work with people oh, all the time. All I mean, the time. You're, you're day in, day out kind of That's navigating like, these I conversations. I coach men through this all the time, and yeah. women, and women too. But men, um, the men who come to me, they don't know that it's okay to be themselves. They tailor mm. themselves to the, the world around them. They're either trying not to be abandoned or they're trying to protect themselves because they don't trust anybody else. So here's what they do is they do not be consistent with their morals and their values. So I say three things. You need, to, you need to pick out three principles that you will never, ever violate ever again for the rest of your life. This is your honor code. Mm. You already have it. You just don't know it. You violate it to please other people and you hate yourself and you make justifications and rationalizations for doing it, but you hate yourself mm -hmm. and other people don't like you for it either. So three things. For me, that's honesty. I can never, ever tell a lie or let someone believe a lie. I have to be fully honest all the time. If, I can, if I'm not, I can't sleep at night. Integrity. If I give my word, I must keep it. Must. And if somebody else believes that I gave my word, I still have to honor it. And take it's the care. biggest one for me as well. Reputation. Yeah. Your word is your bond. Your mm. word is your life. Number three is compassion. Doing what is truly best for someone who is hurting. Mm. Those are my three values. I must live to those consistently. Imagine if someone comes to me in my DMs and then says, hey, Adam, I need some help. I say, screw you, man. I don't have time for you right now. I'm inconsistent. Who would ever come to me again? Right. If my wife comes to me and tries to get something and ask me a question, I just lie to make her feel better. And then she finds out later, why would she ever trust my word ever again? If I tell my wife, yes, I will take care of that project this weekend, and I don't take care of that project this week. And I say, it's not a big deal. What are you whining? What are you nagging me for? Mm. And I put it off and put it off and put it off. Why would she ever trust my word ever again? Mm -hmm. It's not the thing. It's not the squeaky door that you never fixed. It's that you are not a man she can trust to do. I'm not saying you, but everyone right, yeah. but the audience. Yeah. It, it's, it's, the thing is never the thing. The right? thing is never the thing. It's what the thing represents. Mm. It is you being predictable. Women love predictable. Mm. No matter what they say, they love predictable. <laughs> they love predictable values and they know, love a predictable mission because they want to know where you're going and how you're acting as you get there so that they can join you on that journey and invest in it with you. So mm -hmm. any man out there who's struggling with this, if you want a good relationship with yourself and others, three core values and then find your mission and tell everybody you meet about them. Here's my values, uh -huh. here's my mission, and uh -huh. here's how I live them every day. And if you ever don't, fix it. It's called accountability. I love that. Who do you have keeping you accountable in your life right now, Chase? Who keeps you accountable? Who yells at you if you go off the path? My wife. I mean, yeah, that's most guys. If you have a good <laughs> yeah. relationship, my right, wife too. Yeah. If you have a good relationship, she's going to call you on it uh -huh. immediately. Who else do you have besides her? So the pressure's not all on her. Myself. I hold myself very accountable. Good. Yeah. Do you have any buddies that you talk to, any married men that you talk to and say, hey, let's be better husbands together? Um, I, if I ever make this, here's something I am weak on. I need you to hold me up for it. Let's once a week, let's check in and see how we're doing on this task. Do you have any guys like that? Or are you going to in the next couple of weeks? I was going to say, I have guys <laughs> like that in my life that I can mm -hmm. start that with, mm -hmm. but that has not happened yet. That would be vast suppression bonding, by the way. All right. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. I, I feel like in any area of our life, we're trying to improve or hell, even just maintain sometimes. Yeah. I think we already have the solution. Yeah, we do. We're, we're extremely close to the solution. It's again, just that that thin membrane of whatever, yeah. of fear, uh -huh. of limiting beliefs, of worry, of stress, anxiety, you know, 
in our own heads. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, as you're talking, I'm like, yeah, I, I got, there's, there's one guy for sure in my life, another married guy that I, I have vasopressin and yep. oxytocin bonds with, you know, I feel yep. very comfortable and very Absolutely. myself and likewise him. So I'm like, all right, Chase, duh, like there's your guy. There's the thing. Like, you, you know this. Go to him and say, yeah. hey, I want to be a better husband. Mm -hmm. I'm not a bad one, but I want to be a better one. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a better husband too, why don't we get get a suggestion from our wife about what we want to fix, about what, what maybe we should be working on, and let's be accountability buddies. Every Saturday we're going to check mm -hmm. in and say, hey, man, 1 to 10, how did you do this week on it? And what are you going to do to bump that number up by 1 by next week? Too easy, baby. Too easy. That's it. I like it. That's the system. Yeah. And then if you don't, he gets he gets to laugh at you or be, or be yeah. like, "Hey man, what are you doing? Like, yeah, hey, yeah. I went up a number. Where where are you at? <laughs> right? I was on I was on Mind Pump a couple months ago, yeah. and I was there. I was like, "Whoa, my stomach looks a lot bigger than I remember it looking last time I was on on TV." <laughs> well, compared to those guys, especially Sal lately, man. Oh, dude, Jesus they're they're, and they're, yeah. they're incredible. But I was like, man, I don't look. I don't like this. Mm. I, like I I've settled in. I got the dad bod. Okay, I need to fix this. I went to my buddies who are fit, and I said, okay. I don't like this. And they said, yeah, we saw you, man. I was going to say something about it. So I said, okay, mm. I need you to call me and harass me every day to make me go to the gym or every Monday, mm. make me go to the gym. So he said, I got you. So he harasses me every Monday. Hey man, where you at? Are you at the gym? Are you up? It's like five in the morning. Hey man, are you up yet? Are you going? Yeah. All right. I'm getting, I'm getting out of bed, go to the gym. I would not do it if yeah. I didn't have someone at my back saying, Hey man, I will make fun of you if you don't do mm -hmm. it. That's every man everywhere. We all need some guy who's saying, hey, man, where are you at? I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah, stabbing with the stick. You were in the military. Mm. Was it a polite suggestion? Like, hey, Chase, you should do this thing over here. If you do this, you'll be better. Was it a polite, oh, like, friendly, 100%, helping suggestion? all the time. Yeah. Just super friendly, no yelling, right. no yeah. demands. Comforting. Yeah, comforting. Yeah, they yeah, hug yeah. you. They braid your hair. <laughs> what was it for you? What, what drove you to be a better man in the military? Fear of death. Uh, fear of other people dying. That'll do it. Um, you That'll know, do extreme it. Extreme circumstances. Yeah. Getting in trouble. Did you want to be the one letting your guys down? Absolutely not. Why? Well, I, I don't want anyone else to think of me as anything other than reliable. I, I want everyone to know that they can rely on me and to uphold the same standard as I'm depending on them as well. Use that. There are so many men out there afraid that they are worthless and can never achieve anything. So they shy away from mm -hmm. that. And they say, I won't let anybody know what I'm doing so that if, when I fail, I won't feel as bad. There it is. Lean yeah. into it. Say, you know what? I'm going to make it harder for me to quit than it is for me to keep, I, to, to, to not even start. I will go to a friend like I did. Hey, harass me every Monday. I'll go to the gym. I'm feeling a little bit better because mm -hmm. he's been harassing me. I'm eating a little better, taking care of myself. I talked to Sal from Mind Pump. He's mm -hmm. got me on some programs. I read his book. I'm only doing that because I said, I don't like how I look. And I would rather be embarrassed mm -hmm. than just quietly live this way. The question comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Have we lost the ability to call other men out <laughs> appropriately? I feel like maybe it's a lot of men stepping more into the feminine or just the culture. You know, we, we, nobody wants to get canceled. We don't want to say the wrong thing. We want to point something out that, you know, trigger warning, whatever. Yeah. There might be a time and a place for that. I, I think having more emotional intelligence can help you kind of decipher that. Yeah. You'll know at the end of the day if you're being a dick or not. Yeah. But also you'll you'll know if hey you know if you're my guy mm -hmm. yo bro fucking like get your shit together. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. How, so have we lost the art of calling other men out? <laughs> and how can we get back there? I saw I was I love that question. I was just on Twitter earlier today, and there's a guy named which his Twitter game strong. Everybody, hey, by the way. thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I, strong, get, yeah. I get in trouble, but it's fun trouble. <laughs> uh, if you're not a, getting in trouble on Twitter, what are you doing? Shh, really, that's what yeah. Twitter's for. Uh, there's a guy named there on there named Rivolino, and he's anonymous. He's the Green Line guy. Right. You've I probably heard of no, him. No, no, okay. No, no. So he says, if a woman is, if you're a man's leaning into the woman, it means their relationship's in trouble. And he like maps out with celebrity couples and they all, always get divorced later on. If he mapped them out, it's the dude is, is, oh, wow. he is very offensive and very, very on the dot with all of that stuff. You can't even Note tell him he's don't wrong. Get on his radar. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's amazing. But he and I have chatted in DMS, but he posted something very interesting earlier, um, which was when you need to call someone out, here's what you say. Hmm. You're better than this. Wow. Yeah. Hey, bro. Is this who you want to be? I know you're better than this. What do you need to take the next step? How can I help you? Mm. Accountability, resources, training. What can I do to help you? You don't shame them. Hey, man, you know, I, I'm really disappointed. And I've got a I've got a seven year old son. I tell him this. Hey, man, is this what is this who you want to be? Let's think through the consequences. Is this who you want to be? Mm. Do you want those consequences? I know you're better than this. What do you need from me as your father to help you get through this right now? 
how can I help you get through this journey? I'm initiating him into manhood. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to call you out, and I'm also going to offer you resources and support to get you through it. Initiating him into manhood. What do you think of that? Actually, what I'm thinking of, who I'm thinking of, is my father in these circumstances. Perfect. Like I was saying in the beginning, I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm a very introspective person, mm -hmm. and the work that I try to keep in my life and the progression I try to have and how I live a life ever forward, mm -hmm. as I say, as he said, I'm realizing more and more how innate so much of this stuff is in me, but it's not has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the sense that I've decided to honor it and to uphold it and to build a life around it, but mm -hmm. I'm realizing, like just that last blurb you were just saying right there, the last part you were talking about, not a blurb, I'm just having all these flashbacks to conversations with my father, and I'm like, damn, this dude, he was way smarter than I thought. You know, he, <laughs> he knew his shit. He was blocking the generational trauma. He mm -hmm. was making adamant daily choices in how he showed love, how he talked with me. Yeah. And I'm just going back to so many times as a kid, as a teenager, that's exactly what he was saying. No wonder I have this kind of innate yes. capacity and alignment to these beliefs and, and just how I view the world and what I'm looking for in other men. Man. That's exactly what was happening. I could tell that when I walked up outside, outside your studio here. You walked up, it was immediate eye contact. You didn't like shrink. You went, hey man, how you doing? You just came out, you're like, hey, here's who I am. Come on in, come to my place. <laughs> it was like, whoa, it, when you meet a man who's secure, who was raised by a father mm. who initiated him in. It's a different experience. It's a different experience, right? The street out there, this place is gorgeous. We're in LA. Like, there's places where they'll, they'll take your kidneys. Like, you think twice before walking into any yeah, place. Yeah, we're going to need one after you're done, by the way. Yeah, there yeah. you go. There that you go. Later. Just one. That's okay. Yeah, just one. Between friends, hey, what do you care? Um, <laughs> we'll trauma bond. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fast press it. We'll I'll staple bond. it and you hold it. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think twice about walking in here with you. I didn't even think twice because you showed up and I could already tell who you were within moments. Mm. I could tell. And most men, they're, they're hiding. They're, hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, hey. It's, it's not who they are. They're hiding who they are. You don't. You are a man who was raised by his father and initiated correctly. Most men mm. don't have that. Most dads don't know how to do that. I've mapped that out over the last hundred years. Men have died and died and died and been traumatized and pulled away. And we have lost that. We're, we're, we're multiple generations of men raised by masculine women by now. Mm. And we learn about manhood from women. Mm -hmm. And now we're deep into this where we're trying to say, okay, the Vikings killed everybody. Uh, when do the boys grow up into men now? Mm -hmm. We're trying to do it again. And mm. you, you are making that happen. All the men watching your show right now are becoming men. That next generation. That's what needs to happen. That is your father's legacy. Thank you. Thank you. It, it makes me think and have a lot of gratitude for that. I think in my journey of solidifying and finally letting Chase, but Chase the man, mm -hmm. come through and stay alive in every way possible, a lot has been my work, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But like I was just sharing, a lot has been just reflecting on and kind of dissecting and just reverse engineering, if you will, things that I already have. Tools mm -hmm. are already in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. How would you kind of maybe unpack that for somebody who doesn't feel that way, but let's just say we want to do the same work. Let me reverse engineer my life, go mm -hmm. back to my childhood, go back to maybe my relationship or lack of with yeah. my father or the father figure. Yeah. And maybe just see, maybe I do have more than I think. Maybe yeah. I do have more of this masculine, of this type of man I want to be in my life already. Yes. I don't need to go build as much as I think. I need to just, you know, go inward and bring to the surface more. First of all, there are so many men out there wanting to connect, right? Wanting to connect. Your audience, do you have any idea how big your audience is? It's big. But do you have any idea how big your audience is? Uh, we're a little over 3 million total. Well, well, like, what do you mean? Like, for like for the show? Or That's for... fine. Three million is a good number. Well, I mean, it's not collectively. There's no, like, not three million listening right now, but, you there know. There should be. <laughs> uh, there should no. be. I'll take it. But, but think about this, right? If you have three million, you know, you have, you have 100,000 here. You have 500,000 yeah. here. You have two million here, right? Everyone comes in on different pieces. You reach, Each you month reach. Each reaches a little about upwards of like 70K. 
that's a lot. Like month in, month out, yeah. But that's not even just the same 70K over and over and over. You're reaching, let's say, $3 million. Let's Ideally, let's, tell your friends, everybody. Tell your friends. That's right. Let's play with $3 million, though. Um, men survive through the solutions we pass on and the strength that we give to others. Mm-hmm. We survive by the power we give to others. That's called legacy. I okay. said that a moment ago. Your father's legacy lives through you. There are many fatherless men out here in this world that are learning from you and thus learning from your father. So your father, you have you and your brother. There's, mm. Your father didn't have two sons. Your father has three million sons, mm. three million and two that he's living through, that he's guiding. They wow. are learning from other men who have handed down solutions. Mm. Find men who are handing down solutions. People do this all the time. They go and read Marcus Aurelius. The dude had a, a great solutions. Like, I'm reading Marcus Aurelius. no you are carrying forth his legacy and mm. learning solutions from a man who is ancient, who was his, his solutions were so great. We wrote them down and we kept them for thousands of years. Do meditation. that. Medita- it's mm. fantastic. Do that. Study what you have. When I went to school, I got a master's degree in psychology. I didn't reinvent psychology. Mm. I went and studied what people have preserved, the knowledge and the solutions. And then I carried it forward and I built my attachment communities and my attachment boot camp course and all that I've built is here, here is the knowledge I have learned. Here's the solutions. Take them, please. Mm. That's that's what you're doing with this podcast is you find people who have solutions and you put them in front of people who have problems. Mm -hmm. You're facilitating that. So men out there, number one, sit down and make a list of the skills that you have, the solutions you can solve. Do that. And then where you find gaps, Mm. probably the things in your life that make you feel crappiest, write those down. What skills are you missing? I do not have good conflict resolution. I don't know how to share my needs. I don't know how to connect other men. I am mostly surrounded by women because I don't know how to build. Yeah, you're making a list right now. That's awesome. Actually, you're bringing up, sorry to to distract you, but you hit on conflict conflict resolution. And uh, I want to, it's a reminder of myself to actually bring this up because I I did want to dive into this a little bit. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, That, make a list of the skills you have, make a list of the skills you don't have, then find men who have the skills you don't have. And learn from them. That's how you become a rock solid man who knows all the skills. Yeah. And then find someone to give those skills to your son, your adopted son, some dude on the street, your someone you mentor, whatever, build a legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's what men need. You need your, your, your principles that you live by. So people can trust you and you can live um, as, Mm -hmm. as a man, as honor, that's honor. Mm -hmm. You've forgotten the word honor. It's, It's not customary to use it. Honor. That's your honor code and your mission. Pass on the legacy to other people. That's what a man needs. Mm -hmm. That's all. Honor, legacy. Reminds me of this framework of thirds that I've talked about before on the show. I I really attribute a lot to my life, but, you know, specifically through the masculine lens. Mm -hmm. If we can try to keep this balance of thirds, if there are a group of people above me, Mm -hmm. meaning teachers, superiors, there's a group of people at my level, we're peers, we're maybe same intellect, same life experience, same all these things. Mm -hmm. And then a a third, another level that's not beneath you in that context, but that you can teach basically Mm -hmm. that are a step or a hundred steps behind you. Mm -hmm. The more I have made sure to kind of keep that balance as much as possible, it does wonders Mm -hmm. for a lot. Uh, Ego check for continuous learning and making sure that you you can continue to pass back your Mm -hmm. continuing legacy, maybe even building your own. But also that's what I think is necessary for not only my life to excel in the way that I want, but for every other person that I can hopefully come in contact with. A man will never hit 100% every skill on earth and be at the top of anything. And if you ever think you are, then you don't realize what you are missing mm. and you don't have enough goals in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen. But you know, you did bring up conflict and this was an yes. area that I had written down that I've been listening to a lot of your stuff and sure, let's I, do it. I love your approach to conflict. I, I think it was either on mind pump or modern wisdom. Mm-hmm. I was listening. I heard this. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of paraphrasing you. Cool. Conflict is an opportunity to trust other human beings or grow apart. Yes. Walk us through choosing to view conflict as that. This is an opportunity to trust another human being or grow apart. Absolutely. So on the way over here, I was a little bit late, right? I was a little bit late on the way over here. L.A. traffic. I, you know, you don't accommodate for yeah. L.A. traffic until you are in L.A. Yeah. And you say, whoa, this is horrible. It's really traffic. Every billboard was, are you in an accident? Do you need to sue somebody? <laughs> like L.A. traffic is very lucrative. So. I texted you and said, hey, man, I apologize. I'm going to be about 20 minutes late. That was a conflict. Mm. That was a conflict. 
Hey, Chase, I am going to be 20 minutes later than I thought I was going to be. What did we do? Did Chase come back and say, hey, man, you know what? I'm, I'm really disappointed in that. I, I expected you to be here on time. Did Chase or no, you came back and said, hey, man, I appreciate you being here at all. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a great conversation. I'll be ready when you're here. Wonderful. We either could grow apart, mm -hmm. you yelling at me, or we could grow together. Either you could show me that I'm you're someone I can trust during conflict to work with me to cooperate. Mm. Cooperate or not. That's conflict. So men, if you're married, what are you telling your wife? What do you tell your wife during conflict, Chase? Do you cooperate? Uh, yes. Do you make her feel like you are always going to cooperate? I hope so. Okay. If you ever get it wrong, do you go back and apologize that you got it wrong and I then do. cooperate? I do. That's it. You don't have to be perfect. Mm. You have to be show cooperation. Not maybe not as fast as maybe she would like sometimes. It's but never going to yeah, be. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That That's still consistent. That's trustworthy. If you would come back at me, hey, man, you know what? Fine. Whatever. I'll see you. <laughs> I'd be reading it the whole way. You're like, what the hell? What's like, with this guy? Yeah. Like you never thought about LA traffic before. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, or I could show up and you could be like, hey, man, it's all good. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for being here. I'm like. Oh, so in the future, if there's another conflict, if I spill this water on the floor, Chase is not going to scream at me for spilling water on his, I mean, he might, this is a really nice carpet, but you're not going to scream at me. You're going to be like, hey man, you know what? Mess has happened. It's all good. I appreciate you being here. Oh, okay. You have set the precedent. Hmm. Every conflict we have from now on, we'll, I'll be keep correcting to her. I'm going to watch you forever. So conflict's really not as much about this conflict as it is the precipice if that's the right word yeah we're setting for every other conflict always that's the precedent that you're building precedent, forward into yeah. it is can i trust you mm -hmm. and if you can you move closer and you move closer and you move closer and you move closer until like it, it, it's infinitesimally small of we can never be separated mm -hmm. and if you can do that that's what conflict is you define yourself mm -hmm. you define yourself in conflict a man defines himself in conflict. He doesn't define himself when he's sitting on a couch in his underwear drinking beer. He defines himself when he's in conflict. He defines himself when the wife walks in and says, hey, you're drinking beer in front of our son in your underpants. What message are you sending? And he says, oh, shoot, you're right. I should get up and fix that. Mm. Or, hey, you know what? Be quiet. I worked hard. I can do whatever I want. You define yourself in conflict. Men can and should embrace conflict. Don't run away from it. Amen, brother. <laughs> and I'm fighting my mic here again. That's okay. Bear with me, guys. That mic is in conflict with you. <laughs> you know what? We're resolving this conflict. I'm not tossing it out the window. We just got a great question from a man, Joel, here in the studio. Can you say, say how do we combat masculine energy in a woman? In a woman? Ooh. And how you, and plus, uh, part two, how do you get out of the nice guy's face? And how do you get out of the nice guy's face? All right. Okay, so... Women do not want to be in their masculine energy. Women mm -hmm. are in their masculine energy because some man somewhere has failed them. Usually their father and set them up to be in that masculine energy. So they think they have to be in it all the time. Like we're kind of talking about earlier all the, with yeah, my friend dating. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones actually that find the dudes who are nice guys who are like, I'm going to make you so happy. And like they, they resent them, but they also connect with them. So a lot of nice guys are in sexless marriages mm. with men, women who are resentfully in their masculine energy. So a lot of women hate it. They're waiting for him to come out of it. The way you fix that is two pieces. Number one, if she is so deep in her masculine energy from her father failing, you may not be able to fix it. You can invite her into better mm. by being consistently yourself. Live to your principles, be a man of honor and a man of mission and invite her into a better life. Show her here as a consistent man. Absolutely. Yeah. The research shows, interestingly, 97% of the time, if a man converts to a new religion, his wife converts with him. 97% of women wow. are likely to follow their husband into a new religion. That's huge. That's enormous. And we should be looking at that and saying, okay, women want to work with their man, even if they're really resistant, really mm. resistant. I went through a religious conversion in my own room, in my own marriage. And my mm. wife at first was like, and then leaned into it and we did it together. We built it together. Wow. She was petrified at the beginning and it worked great because she trusted me to lead her into it. I invited her into it instead of dragging her into it. So if you are a man who's doing that, if your wife is masculine and you are checked out nice guy, it, it actually goes together. You have to fix the nice guy problem by stepping into, these are my principles. I will mm -hmm. never violate them again. I'm never going to tell a nice white lie ever again. I'm never mm -hmm. going to cover things up. I'm never just going to please people. I will be upfront. If I'm insecure, I'm going to ask you, hey man, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
Let me pretend to be a nice guy for a minute. Hey, man, I showed up late. I didn't even say anything about it because I was so scared. Uh, I'm not saying anything about it now because I'm afraid that if I mention it, you're going to be mad at me. So I'm just covering it up and I'm just hoping you're going to be really nice. But I'm going to promise you a lot of nice things. <laughs> I'm going to promise to like blow this up all over my social media. You can see the body language. Like uh -huh. I'm going to take care uh -huh. of it and, yeah. and I'm going to make you feel so happy that you'll forget about the thing I did that was wrong and you won't abandon me or yell at me. Nice guy energy. Mm. I texted you. Hey, man, I'm going to be late. All right. I showed up here. Hey, man, sorry I'm late. Eh, it's all good. Cool. And I've used it as a teaching moment because I'm not embarrassed. Like, oh, let's never mention it again. He's going to be mad at me. No, like. It's really at the bottom of that, just owning your mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's owning your fears and mm -hmm. mistakes and calling it out saying, hey, man, sometimes I overthink things in my head. Sometimes I'm worried you're mad at me and I'm not going to ask you about it. Sometimes I'm doing this and this. I'm Own insecure. it and express it. Own, Own it, it, express, express it. it. Give context mm -hmm. and then say, I hate it. I never want to do it again. So mm -hmm. here's what I'm going to do instead. If you ever see me doing these things, call me on it and I will fix it. Mm -hmm. It's accountability. It's exposing yourself, differentiating, and saying who you are. You fix nice guy by not being a nice guy. Ooh. You just do it. And people will either accept you, they'll love you, yeah. or they won't. The people who are sick and toxic, man, they, they won't like it because you're stealing. You're, you're not giving to them anymore. That you got sacrificing yourself for them. They'll leave. Mm -hmm. But people love a man who's consistent and honest because stress is zero. You just say, hey, man, are you mad at me? Nope. Hey, man, did I do something wrong? Uh, yeah, you did, but I already told you about it and how to fix it. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That fast. Yeah. No stress, no reading, <laughs> nothing. Uh, that's how you get a woman out of her fem out of her masculine energy is by being that man who builds the structure, tells her what's happening, tells her what you need, is clear and calm, asks questions, mm. takes her seriously and says, let me take your advice. Let me listen to you. Let me talk to you. Let me actually take mm. your feelings under consideration. Let me help you. Let me solve this problem. I'm going to be a considerate leader, but a leader nonetheless, and I will be consistent all the time masculine energy you want a woman out of her masculine energy be masculine feminine energy go figure right yeah feminine energy responds to masculine energy mm. the hardest hardest wives i have seen as long as they don't have like borderline personality disorder mm. the hardest most masculine most resentful wives if a man steps into it and starts leading without being resentful without whining without going hey i did it for two weeks and you didn't sleep with me when the guy does that now nah. Yeah. But when he steps in and says, I'm going to be me, I'm going to be a man because I need to do it. Our family deserves it. And I don't care how you respond. Wives, she, she gravitates to her. She can't even stop herself. Mm -hmm. If a woman is in her masculine, you need to be in your masculine better than she is. And she will be in her feminine almost every time. I, I'm dying laughing inside here as well because this is so spot on. This was something that I did in my marriage around like late last year. It was kind of around the time where I, my our mutual friend was like, I'm so tired of being in my masculine. And I had this light bulb moment. The smallest little things, and I think any guy can relate to this. Yeah. Just being less accommodating mm -hmm. out of fear of not doing something, going somewhere, going to the restaurant that you think that she wants. Accommodate accordingly. But, but I realized yeah. where I was accommodating just out of the sake of trying to just be... Flexible. Yeah. The moment that I stop that, I can, I mean, I know my wife, but I can see the difference in yeah. her. I can feel the energy. Yeah. More specifically, case by case, whenever I do make a decision and I stand by it. Yeah. Like, it's just like, she gets like, ooh. They love it. it. The, more sex, uh, it, like intimacy, just everything. And I'm like, all I did was just, hey, this is what we're doing. Yeah. My, my, my kind of catchphrase now is uh, I handled it. Yeah. Like, I just want a man that's going to handle things. So I just, I say in the, the dumbest little task, cleaning, taking the dog out, you know, picking the restaurant, I handled it. Yeah. Hand, sometimes I'm joking, but other times yeah. I'm like, no, babe, I handled it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works wonders. Absolutely. It is. It, when you're masculine, they can be feminine. Mm. They can be, hey, the masculinity is covered. Everybody is safe. Go ahead and do your thing mm. and build us on the inside. That's it. That's huge. And Joel, remind me, what was the second part of your question, man? Oh, we got it. Okay, cool. He killed it. All right, let me check. As we kind of get towards the end here, yeah. Oh man, there's so many other things, but hit me with all of them. Oh, we kind of covered a lot of these things. Um, oh, okay. I think maybe for a lot of men, we might think it's too late to change. <laughs> I'm too far gone. My marriage is lost. My relationship is whatever. I'm too settled in my ways. It could be an age thing. It could be an experience thing, a season of life. Mm -hmm. 
change is possible. And I believe again here, I'm kind of paraphrasing from something from you. Change is possible no matter the place in life you are in. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. It's a matter of finding the pieces of your puzzle that you missed. The oldest man who's ever come to me in for coaching was 79 years old. Mm. He had never experienced a healthy relationship before in his life. Wow. He was very financially successful, had never experienced real love, real connection before, 79 years old. Mm. And we still built him a life that he was proud of. We still built him a legacy. We Damn. still eased his pain. The oldest woman who ever came to me was 78. Wow. She had had a lifetime of broken relationships. She had kids, but they all resented her. They did not speak to her, but they all resented her. They all fought each other. Mm. It was a dramatic, awful family. Through her, we were able to instill great peace and love through her kids and her grandkids and her great-grandkids. So she could, she had a terminal illness. She could pass away at peace because her family was at peace after a lifetime of mm. fun. It is never too late. I have guys come into me for coaching all the time. Hey, Adam, I'm too old to have kids, so is there just no point in me living? No. Jeez. How many fatherless children are there in this world? How many men out there who are half your age, right? You're 40. There's 20-year-old men who need the solutions you have. Go gather the solutions, bring them back, and present them to men who are going to kill themselves if you don't get them those solutions. You have built a legacy in men who can who will die without you. There are men out there right now killing themselves. Is it 23 veterans a day or something yeah, like that? Yeah, It's more than that now. It's, it's more like than 20, that now. 22, 23. That is, is what it used average. to be. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the number the just keeps like ticking up. I think, yeah. Right. It just keeps going up every year. Mm. Uh, there's, there's people killing themselves right now because they don't have the solutions you can go find and bring to them. Mm. So if there's a man out there who's 80 years old and says, I never had kids. My life was pointless. Okay. Who can you give solutions to and build a legacy in right now before you die? Mm. What can you accomplish? If you hated this world, what are you going to do to make it better? It is never too late, and there is always something for you to build. Oof, man, like I don't want to ask any more questions after that. I mean, what a way to kind of round out this episode. Um, dude, this has been so incredible. Your presence is masculine your presence is strong is confident thank you and I, I know that you've got just so much work and experience behind you to back all this up so we're gonna have all the information down in the show notes anybody wants to dive into your books your work your courses the coaching thank um you. incredible man thank you um and selfishly i want to say thank you because having conversations like this it, it's just it's wild that this is what i'm doing with my life right now like i would be wanting to talk with you or read your stuff you know anyways and i'm just so grateful to be in a position now to have you come halfway across the country, sit here with me for a couple hours, and just, you know, now I get to walk away with this information, with new information, but also a solidification with a lot of stuff that is gonna help keep me being the man that I wanna be, but grow even more into the man that I know that I can be. So, Adam, I say thank you. My last question to kind of bring it home to the theme of the show and shout out Pops, honor his legacy, mm -hmm. ever forward, the model that he set before me and my family and his mantra for years, it's basically everything we've been talking about, but I would love to get your interpretation kind of through this, this male masculine lens of living a life ever forward. What does that mean? How, how do you live a life ever forward? How should men keep moving forward? Until the minute that you die, you are always becoming a stronger man. Mm. So keep building your skills, keep finding your gaps, keep refining yourself, don't be afraid to look at the places where you're weak because that's where you need to do your work next. You were once weak everywhere. I remember holding my son in my arms for the first time. He couldn't even hold up his head. He couldn't talk. His eyes were hardly open. He couldn't do hardly anything. He could poop. That was about it. It was all. <laughs> we can usually still do that pretty we well. We can, yeah, usually. <laughs> he has learned everything. Everything mm. he has become. He's seven. His birthday was just a couple days ago. Everything he has become, he has learned. Mm. Everything he will become, he is going to learn. Don't ever, any man out there, myself, you, anybody watching, don't ever consider yourself a work that is done or too far gone because every minute that you're alive, you can learn a new skill and grow mm. and become a new man every day. I mean, what a powerful reminder to maybe pull us out of it's too far gone for me, I'm too late, there's still work to be done, but also as the humble reminder that no matter how far I have come, no matter how happy I am, no matter my accomplishments, my peace, there's still more work to be done. Always. Damn, brother. 
Well, again, we're gonna have everything listed for the audience, but if they want to go somewhere right now to connect with you, where is that? What are you doing in the world? Oh Most man, right let's make it real easy. I got a website called adamlanesmith.com. Mm-hmm. Everything's on there. Uh, if this was hit a hit for you, I'm on YouTube mm-hmm. at Adam Lane Smith. I've got 400 videos on there. Oh wow, damn. A lot okay, of them. Yeah. I've got five or six just on male depression. I have mm-hmm. five or six on vasopressin bonding. I have everything on there. Uh, I'm also, if you prefer like visual stuff, mm-hmm. on Instagram at attachment Adam. I have tons of videos, mm-hmm. tons of reels, everything on there. I am everywhere you want to be. Guys, check them out. Incredible content. Some funny stuff, some viral stuff, some you know, good stuff, no matter what. Absolutely.